Today's introduction is brought to you by Super Robots. Okay. Always good to have some Super Robots, I guess. Ladies right, and gentlemen, boys and girls. David, how are you doing today? I am doing very, 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 very good. That's fantastic. My name is Dust, and we are on the second game of today's King of the Hill. Saturday, Wave Gamers, international, local, all kinds of fun Bang. tournament. We have Kangaroo Punchers, headed by the Captain Conewolf, against Zombie Scumbags, headed by Guardian of Cinerous. We've got all sorts of people in each group of individuals. In case you haven't been a part of our King of the Hill game before, basically the way it works is uh, Captain is chosen for either side, and then they draft the players, and then we do a traditional Dota 2 style Captain's Draft. Currently, we have the bands going out. On the dire side, there is Invoker and Juggernaut. That's a meta ban as long as we mm -hmm. see it, as plus the Invoker, which is just a respect ban against Cenarus along with a Shadow Fiend ban out on the Radiant side, and we are waiting their second ban. David, Will they ban Meepo? Will possibly, they ban Meepo? Possibly. Just a random Meepo ban. That's what we've been doing today so far. But David, I gotta say... Oh, go ahead, please. Sorry. What other individuals are here today, sir? Well, I think we actually have a really, really... Um, oh, casters or players? Casters, players, everything, sir. Well, we got, like, so many people... We got player wise, I think we have some really oh they do ban the Meepo. That's a clearly a giant midget target ban. We have really even teams. I'm not sure who I think is gonna win. Uh okay, I have a guess, but I'm gonna keep it secret for now. Alright, well I'm not gonna keep mine secret. I'm gonna say Cone Wolf is gonna win once again. Radiant. Okay, well that's good, because I think Radiant's gonna win, so that's perfect. Alright, All right. so that's a that's a fair trip off. So we've got a first pick, Tide Hunter, great off lane hero. Great initiator once he gets his blink dagger. Has tons of sustain. He's got strength. He's got his kraken shell, which debuff, which uh, relum, uh, eliminates Sky debuffs and gives Rath armor. Mage. Along with a Skywrath Mage pickup, which was picked up last game by the Dire Side as a first pick. So we've got matching pickups. Let's see if we have, what was it last time? A Batrider as their second pickup for Dire. That was the last game. Let's see if Sonic mm -hmm. Scumbags gets a similar uh, pickup. I don't think they'll go for the Batrider because that was... That was, I think, a special pick for the victor. So I'm not sure what he's going for here. Another Skyrath Mage first pick. After, he didn't have that big of an effect in the first game. It well, is I, very strong against Sidehunter, though. I think I think Skyrath Mage is just a very remain. solid pickup. Currently, if you synergize him well, he's got a lot of damage uh, on a time. really long range. And his nuke uh, for an ulti is just really damaging as an ultimate. But... Kangaroo now sees that, so they're likely going to pick up heroes that have high strength gain or something that counters magic, sort of like a Pugna with his ward, or maybe Nyx with his uh, counter, his, what is it, Spiked Carapace, or a hero that naturally picks up a blade mail, or a hero that can easily carry a blade mail with little trouble. So, uh, as a first pick, it's a very open one, but it's an easy, counterable hero. But would you well, counter Skyrath Mage, or would you rather counter other heroes? I mean, the nice thing about the Skyrath here is that he gives him a silence with the Ancient Seal that's going to uh, silence the Tidehunter, Binner, and Pinging Rad, whatever. But unlike a lot of other silences, it does zero damage, um, but it's, and it's still single target, so Kraken Shell won't naturally purge it off. So that helps a lot um, against the Tidehunter trying to look at him from uh, getting that Ravage off. A Rubik pickup. That's, that's probably a meta Rubik there. A meta, a, a meta in many ways. Uh, I wonder if uh -huh. we can see... I wonder if we can see what the rate of second pickups on Rubik in a professional game, like second picks for uh, Dire or Radiant. That would be Maybe really our stat man, Vengeance? Possibly. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm just very conference. curious because he's a nice hero to pick up, great pickup to pick up Ravage, but then an early pick on him might create uh, kangaroo punchers to not pick up heroes they wanted to pick up Five in case Rubik running. steals their spells. And again, their support duo is not Resident bad, time. but it's kind of underwhelming. That's not a scary support duo per se. No, it's 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 also not a very sexy one either. If you if Don't you consider the meta, but a troll warlord pickup is most certainly sexy with his attack speed bonus and all sorts of bashes Radiant and just band. people being upset about him. There's a reason why. Well, it's I think we troll have to be warlord. I think we have to be fair to Cone Wolf. Cone Wolf has been a big troll Radiant warlord fan long before he became a popular in the meta. Yeah, and then he's just a troll lover. The third and. uh third ban each 
for Dire uh, Silencer and a Storm Spirit. Uh, David, do you know any sort of statistical reason for that? If, if either side knows the other side to having a hero, uh, not a hero, a player that really Five likes well, their hero? I don't know. I think I know Giant Midget is a capable Storm Spirit player, and Umar actually plays Where's it pretty well time? as well, but I don't think that's a target ban. I think that's a strategic ban from Scenarius, so I'm more wondering if there's a carry, maybe a squishy carry that he's trying to protect uh, from the Storm Spirit zipping on him, or if he's just trying to make sure that the ganking potential late game is not too, I mean, the mid game is not too hard for the Dire. And there's also a lot of synergy between Troll Warlord and Storm Spirit. Having that type of free attack speed does benefit him a lot, uh, gives him more chances to get off that overload. And another so, Viper ban. This is the second time Viper has been the fourth ban on yeah. the Dire side for today. And Vengeance, is, Vengeance has banned out. Last game, Vengeance was the third pickup on Radiant, but this time it's the fourth ban. So, I mean, she's a very I, solid support, but I can also see why they would not want her on the Dire side. A swap on a hero that's outside the range of Ravage, bringing them into Ravage, doing Ravage, Troll Warlord, trying to catch somebody, they escape out, they swap out. The stun is solid, the negative armor is solid, the bonus damage is solid. Like, as we said last time, David, remaining. Vengeance is such a solid support. Oh. Or position three hero to have. It, it also helps that um, Tidehunter uh, is not a hero you want to swap in at all. So is no, you know, the die, the radiant really couldn't pick Vengeful Spirit, especially since they already had two supports. So considering that it's a relatively strong meta support, it's an easy choice for them to go ahead and ban it out. Yep, and Centaur gets picked up on zombie scumbags. That's going to be their offlaner and their their primary initiator, and he is absolutely terrifying as an initiator he deals so much burst damage once he hits level eight once he hits level eight he's got hopefully a good amount he's got a you know point and stun maxed out uh, it, uh, uh, uh e double edge double edge thank you very much sir his ult is there the ult gives bonus trample damage oh, i mean it's just a fantastic hero to have and Ooh, shadow shaman gets picked up on kangaroo punches that's the lockdown ah uh, i i think he was not picked up for his ult. He was picked up for his generic Sniper. lockdown role. Sniper gets picked up as well, and that's a great Dying counter to pick. Shadow Shaman and Troll. There's such yeah. low HP without items, and Sniper just outranges them all, and he's going to just pop them down if I he like has that pick a lot, especially with the Centaur Royal Runner, who's a good frontliner and can also give him uh, Stampede to get out if he gets in trouble. But Shadow Shaman's a really interesting pick here. Because I think you're right, he's mainly picked for the lockdown and not the wards. And right now, Lion is sort of that go-to heavy lockdown support. So I'm surprised that it wasn't the Lion from Conwolf. Uh, but, I mean, in contrast, the, the snakes are really good. They are good. I, I'm a huge Shadow Shaman player. I love Shadow Shaman as a Reserve hero. Time. His biggest disadvantage is that his stuff costs so much mana and he's slow as all get out. He is and like, he's so squishy. Oh, yeah, he's made of tissue paper and balsa wood. I mean, like... You could have made him in shop class in eighth grade. That's how I did actually. Is. I invented Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman in eighth grade shop class. You bother painting him? No, I made him out of balsa wood, dude. That's why he's what? so squishy. We just what? talked about this. Yeah, it's true. What kind of wood glue did you use? I actually Almost? didn't use any wood glue. I just hoped that the natural liquid in moisture in the dried out shop wood would keep him from falling apart. And you know what? Since that was a public school shop class. You know that wood is as dry as a bone. But, you know, at least you tried, because Shadow Shaman's all about trying hard. This is a really weird conversation. I agree. Let's move right. on. Uh, fourth pick on Kangaroo Punchers. What do you think? Uh, there's, they've got initiation. They've got lockdown. They've got that carry damage. Probably Troll will pick up an SNY to just chase people down. Uh, phase Boots maybe to synergize with, with that and just be a race car all day along. Jakiro gets picked up. Radiant team. Mm, what do you think? I like this is looks like a this looks a lot like a 6.80 draft. The the trolls a little odd, but it looks very Tide Hunter, Shadow Shaman, Jakiro. I remember these teams. I remember putting teams together like these, and they can work well. They can push. They can defend. They can team fight. I think they need someone that's going to scale and 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 be able to get in there and fight uh, in the mid. Yeah, I'm not final, really sure who that is. Final bands out coming out. Dire bands out. Medusa. And Radiant bans out like Magina, the, the anti mage, who like recently had band. who recently had a bad Dota 2 cosplay video put up on Reddit. If you're interested in that, go to Reddit.com/slash Dota 2 or whatever you want to look at how to R get R there. And it's, a great, it's, it's, a, it's a great video, in my Five opinion. It's really remaining. funny. Uh, David, have you seen it? 
I don't think I have, actually. It's, it's really good. It Reserve came up today. Time. All right, so final pick. David, what do you think? Who's going to round the game out? Either a, another carry <sighs> for zombies come back or channel. a mid. Yeah, I would expect the sniper to be mid and to, to pick up a safe laner here. Because uh, I know Scenarius does play the sniper, but I'm really not sure. There's a lot of different ways they can do this. Although, by the way, we did get an answer back from our Statsman Vengeance, and Rubik is actually more commonly picked up in the third position than in the second position. Five so, kind of going back to your earlier point about, you know, when do you pick up that Rubik? Obviously, cool. can't have a big influence on the draft. Oh, Although, well, there's the Shadow answer. Shaman Wards, Jakiro. Oh, J oh, go ahead, please. Sniper is not the mid. It's going to be Quippity Quap. Unless yep. Quap goes safe lane from unlikely. which is really unlikely. I really, uh, I've seen her picked up like a uh, solo safe lane by yeah. herself to get levels. Yeah. But in this situation, this sort of team organization sort of cohesion. I mean, sniper's going safe lane. Quap's going to go mid. It could be, it could be something like that. Vengeance says it could be a safe lane centaur. And co-op off lane. It, it could also be a co-op solo safe lane and a centaur and an aggressive tri lane because he does synergize well with Skyrath Mage. Reserve he can amplify time. his magic damage. But I really think we're just going to see a solo off lane centaur, mid queen, and sniper in a defensive tri lane. Yeah, I, I, they could I do, do something weird, but I don't expect it. I do think we're thinking way too hard. Yeah, I, I yeah. do think that they're going to put co-op mid and the sniper's going to be safe lane with Rubik and uh, Skyrath supporting remain. him. Uh, two seconds left. They're going to pick up Spectre. That's going to be their super duper hard I think carry. it's a good pick. I like that a lot, actually. I agree. I, I, I'm I, really I, liking Conewell's drafts recently. They're very well rounded. They're not. He's not afraid to go old school when necessary. And I, he's coming up with some creative choices. I really like what he's doing. You know what? I, I agree. I think that's a total good idea. Anyway, we're getting into the lane up. We've got Metamorphosis on the wonderful the Rubik. Gimli on the... Skyrath Mage, Dacen on the War Runner, and Cinerus on the fantastic Quibbity Quap, as well Quibbity -quap. as Rock going on the Sniper. And I'm still having that problem of not being able to select heroes, ladies and gentlemen, so... Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Strange. Yeah. No early game smokes here. Anyway, David, why don't you give the lineup going uh, from Spectre on? I'll move the map. Absolutely. So, for the Dire team, on Comos, uh, Comos Draft... We do have Cone Wolf himself. On the Spectre, probably going to be a safe lane farmer in a defensive tri lane. Supporting Cone Wolf is going to be a Shadow Shaman, played by Kazuko. Uh, going mid is going to be Giant Midget facing up against the Queen of Pain, the Troll Warlord. Rounding off that defensive tri lane is going to be Gal on the Jakiro, a hero I know he's quite comfortable on. And then going solo off lane is Umark, the Playmaker himself, on the Tidehunter. Definitely a role solo offlane tide hunter that he has found himself on in the past, and he has eight tangos and a stop. And there goes the horn, ladies and gentlemen. We've got three men top, four men top, I should say, trying to guarantee that 100 gold, 100 XP advantage for Giant Midget. He's going to switch those axes around in a sort of taunting fashion. Meanwhile, on bottom lane, Rock picks up that bounty. Hard carry gets the gold. Mid gets the gold. Good luck, have fun. Called out by Giant Midget, and everybody moves into position. Meta knocks out that ward, so now Vision is solid on the Radiant side in harsh contrast to the last game. Quick D ward top, though, from uh, Dyer. So, Vision is like a higher priority. Pause goes out. Kazuko gets DC'd. And we have a wait. David, do you feel this is a more common problem since the new uh, Year of the Ram game? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it was even before that. I don't know what's going on with US East, man, but it's not good. US East is... I'm usually someone who's like, guys, stop complaining about the servers. They work on them. It's hard. Whatever. But it is starting to get kind of ridiculous because it's been like this for a while and it hasn't really improved. Yeah. And there might be something going on on the Valve side that we have no idea. Yeah. Oh, so... Uh, ben Vengeance just talked about the DDoS, you... which is... I don't know if that's been confirmed by Valve, but they're definitely... That's been alleged... I'm not sure. I'm not. I, I. I'm not sure if Valve has claimed their DDoS, but I do think there's some evidence to think that may be going on. Well, if you think about it, in harsh contrast, if they are being DDoSed and you can still connect to games and you can still do all sorts of things. Yeah. I'm sure Valve is trying. I, I'm sure they care. I just oh, wish yeah. it wasn't quite this bad. Yeah, me too. Uh, anyway, so far, one last hit on Rubik. That's a lot of money going his way in 23 seconds. What do you think I, he's going to buy with that one last hit's worth of gold? 
I mean, here's my question. How did he get a last hit? I what did he last hit? The uh, dire ward. That counts as the last hit? That's what that game says so. All right, well, we're going to get a D ward for both sides, so And Gal it's hasn't fair. gotten rid of it, so let's see if he gets it and Yeah, yeah. maybe he's just going to continue continually miss uphill and he's just going to give up. Like it's just not worth it. Uh, Benjamin says you get 50 gold from dewarding. I know that, that was a 6.79 change, but I didn't know. See, I I agree with that. I knew that, but I didn't know that it counted. Yeah, as... I didn't know it counted either. Yeah. I... <laughs> you learn feel... new things every day. I I feel like like this is like one of those small things that distorts stats, and now everybody's gonna complain about it on Reddit if they find out. Like, oh my gosh, it distorts the last hit deny statistic out the wazoo. Look at all these pressing I mean, games that get this all just. Probably not. Here's my question. Yeah, man. I think if that's how it's gonna work, if it counts as the last hit, then Ward should also give like one point of experience. Yeah. Hey, Dave, can you do me a favor? Click on yes, Gal for a second. You. Click on Gal. Yeah. Okay. Clicked on Gal. Okay, never mind. No, I, I'm still trying to figure out why in the world I can't click heroes. I wish I could tell you. Me too. Oh, we may see a first blood here on Dashin. Oh, Kazuko right clicks oh, him no. down. He went for he a return has the shackles. level one. Here's Gal. Mm, Kaz it's really close range. Jason moves out. He gets slowed and damaged over time, but backs out. His creeps come in and support him. He's at 75% health, but he'll be a okay. Cone is farming like crazy. Currently, we've got three and one mid versus a net one and zero. Now, I've played with Centaurus a couple times. I know him. He loves his Quibity Quap. Do you feel? Do you feel like laning potential? He's got a, a <laughs> lot better case for a first blood. I mean, it's gonna be hard for Troll to kill Quap because obviously, with the blink, very escapable, has a dagger to help kite. I don't know that there's really a lot of easy kill potential uh, until Queen has six. And then, maybe. I mean, obviously, with ganking, they have pretty decent ganking supports on both sides. Something's so, happening bottom. Oh, yeah, they're, trying, they're going for it's a D-Ward fight. Uh, Umar gets picked up. He gets dropped down. There's nobody to stun. Damage is brought down. Rock's the shrapnel shot. slows, but he's outside of range. Right click's coming down by meta, but out Umar I don't, goes. I don't think they could have killed him, but he should have thrown another shrapnel here. Although Umar Gates is going to self up. I agree. If he if he really felt he might have decided after the first one that it wasn't gonna happen. Sal was popped by Umar. He is now full full of health. He's still level one, mind you, versus Irox level two. Gimli is wait, how close is he? I can't even select, so I can't even tell, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. Bounty room picked up by Meta. Centaur's Jason going for this top room. But nobody is worrying about it. Look at this. So complete rune control. Uh, Ward-wise, by the dire, Kazuko comes in. Is he going to shackle? Oh, he doesn't. Uh -oh. He cancels it like a smart person, because that would have been really risky. In the meantime, Gal comes in to support him. Dason keeps on chasing. Simply not Ooh, oh, he, that was a miscast. Yeah, that was a mistake. Out. Popped the illusion, but... Centaur illusions are also tough. It's not that big of a deal as early in the game, but Centaur illusions oh. give return damage, full return damage, Look so... Look at that. It's just, they hurt to clear. Yeah, yeah, they hurt a lot. Gal is, Gal is like, very low. Them. Yeah. Very, very low, and I don't think that was worth it for him. I think they should have just let it pass out over time. Centaur illusions are, uh, they hurt. Yup. At the three-minute mark, we've got 15 and 3 for Cone Wolf, 12 and 3 for our dear Irock, 10 and 5 for Centaurus mid lane. In comparison, 10 and 5 as well for Giant Midget, and off lane, Umarg has himself 4 and 3. What do you think, David? So far, how are things going? I mean, I think everyone's pretty happy here. Um, Umar is doing okay. And the real thing is, Spectre is, is the greediest carry, um, the greediest carry in the game. He's gonna counter the enemies a lot, and I think he's gonna try to go for a very fast Radiance here, if he can get away with it. So, the real, if, if they can, um, keep Centaur under control long enough, it'll be very good for the Dire. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the problem is that, pretty soon, Sniper's gonna be able to comfortably solo the Tide Hunter with his long range um, and good uh, scaling damage. But Cone Wolf isn't going to be able to solo the Centaur for a while. Well, and axes are spinning mid lane. Giant Midget tries to deal damage. Centaurus backs out, screams out, deals some damage. Axes get switched. What will happen? Midget's just going to go for top rune. Yeah. And which is an invis. What do you think? At level 5, do you think he can get anything out of it? 
I don't think he can kill the queen. Maybe the centaur if it was pushed up, but Umar could gets also try picked to up and bottom. put up. Oh, Meta He's loves done. to cliff people. He just He's loves done. to cliff people so and, much. And you know what? I don't think kill him. Leave him up there. They're spending way too much time doing that. They should they're, just leave him there. Yeah, I agree. It's better than killing here him. Because here comes Midget. Midget's now invis. They're wasting a whole lot of time. Umar can just deal with it with his Kraken shell. Midget comes in, spins his axes around, right clicks. Umar dies. Midget gets picked oh, up, and possibly he's put up as well. Oh my god, but Meta gets popped. Just leave him. Don't, don't try to kill him. Oh, but Cenarus oh. comes in as well. This, I actually, I, I think this is worth it. This is totally worth it. Two for one, and... What they should have done was just left a Tide Hunter up there. And then when Troll came over to help him, just put him up on the cliff too. It left it both of them together. That would have been funny. Uh, it would have been funny, but I actually think statistically wise, it was a smarter choice. They got two kills out of that with one on the, you know, dire side with a hero that is supposed to die all the ding dang time. And Iraq is right clicking Umarg right now. That, that Kraken shell plus the shield is just, nah, he doesn't care. He literally doesn't care. But that slow and stop nasty meanwhile mid lane everything is back to normal midget has full mana and uh Cenaris is about 50 percent but he's got his ult in the meantime dason has almost got his uh tranks Kung wolf is free farming 22 and 5 with uh, i rock with 24 and 5 so the competing tri lanes paying off comparatively in some ways but more activity is bottom lane more kills are happening, but more deaths are happening, so I'm not quite but sure But again, what's going on. I think the farm on Spectre is much more important than the farm on Sniper. Like, in if terms... Spectre... She already has 1,700 gold. If she gets a really fast Radiance, I don't see how... I don't see how uh, Radiant wins this game. All right. I don't think it's uh, possible. I'll, I'll agree with that point, but... I think farm is important on both heroes, but it's more important in a positive sense for uh for specter so like yeah. if sniper gets farmed that's great it's better t i didn't understand what just happened <laughs> did you watch the bottom lane rune pickup no i was watching this thinking yes. about going in on so top. meta attacked the rune the attack okay. landed first but somehow midget picked up the the rune anyway i'm not quite sure what happened there i think that that may be i don't know that may be just just specter has 2k gold sniper Jeez, kills Umar needs to be like Oh, that's that's good. See, he, the, Sniper can really deal with this Kai Hunter very happily. I really think the supports, considering the fact that Spectre is such a big threat, need to let uh -huh. Sniper just Jason. farm. Jason gets stunned out. He stuns as well. Backs out. He's level 5. In TP, Centaurus, they might get a counter kill. But Jason is not level 6. Up, oh, the blade goes out. Kazuko gets hit damage over time, but the right click brings him down as well. Back goes Gal. Back goes Kung Wolf. They're seeing that Centaurus is in. Centaurus doesn't have the mana, but... He's there as a threat. He's going to leave, but, probably. Uh, it, it's here. all about the specter. Uh, over 2k gold now. Not uh, le um, you know, 1,500 or so from the relic. If he can get this relic without dying, and if he can get it before, like, 15 minutes, man, mm, mm, mm. It'll be good. They, these Radiant, these Radiant supports need to leave the lane and go make something happen, because they cannot play attack. passively against the specter. If they do, they're just going to lose. They need to well, let Sniper solo the Tide Hunter because he can solo him very happily and go gank middle or top or somewhere. Dason needs to be screaming gank top. He needs to be clicking that Spectre, checking his inventory. He says, guys, 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 he's rushing Radiance. He's got no items. We can kill him so easily. Those, uh, mm. Sorry, I'm rambling. Go ahead. No, I disagree. I think you're making great points. But in the meantime, Giant Midgen is using his ult to bring the tower down. In the meantime, Gimli comes in, slowly walks his way in. There's the slow. Kaboom! There is the my blink. But here's yep. the double damage. Who will pick it up first? It's a race. It oh, gets canceled out by both of them. Midget oh, gets God, hit. Kazuko gets hit by the air damage. Boom! There goes the ult, and he goes down. Generous chases great. out Giant uh, Midget, and he leaves. Great game sense from Scenarius. He knew right where the edge of the ult was, even though the, the animation didn't touch uh, Shadow Shaman, but he still died. I think that was just luck. <laughs> or we can give him credit. We can do both. No, no. I think you, you, I think giving him credit right. is it's very funny. nice. It's like, Nah, nah, it was just luck. And you, I, you very well may be right. But, I mean, if I, I, I think that was luck. Can I, just uh, I also point think out... it could be server differences, because remember, we do oh, have an East point. Coast, West Coast that's problem. That's a good point. In the meantime, I... there Wait, is a sentry put up to deal with the dewarding of the pull camp. Gal is getting things set up. In the meantime, Dalson has his six. Uh, does he have his, his tranquils? David, I still can't touch here. Dyson? 
Yes, uh, sir. He does have his tranquils, yes. Okay, so he has his tranquils. Cone's got some fortified. HP. Danson can't nuke him Dyer's down, no. especially with attack. two dire he uh, yeah. supports in position. Kazuko pulling the camp and Gal doing something. In the meantime, bottom attack. lane, Gimli and Rock are just dealing a little bit of damage over time while Umar is in position to just slow them down. Ceneris is contesting with Giant Midget as well. Ah, it's all said and done. Samey, samey. I just want to point out how well the Radiant Tri-Lane is functioning. Even though they're down 5-1, to one, they're still, in my opinion, way ahead in this game because of how effective the Radiant Tri-Lane is being. They're just keeping the Centaur where he's just around. He's, he's getting okay levels, not great. He's stealing a little bit of the stack every now and then. But Cone Wolf now up to 3,200 gold. And they still have got no real chance to kill him so far. These dire supports are doing what's necessary, and they ha they know what they need to do. Keep the Spectre safe. I, I think really think... Oh, they, now, as I say this, we do see Queen and possibly Skyrath moving in that direction. Yeah. Uh, and the supports are leaving. Uh, can we pause, uh oh please? here we I'm go. The capacity uh -oh. Three supports. Irock is there. Tide walks in. Ravage. Come on, gal. There you go. He ch gets a stun down. In comes our dear friend Kazuko to see if he can chain it up, but out goes Rock. He moves out in Invis. Giant Midget is in position, along with Meta. Meta comes in, oh, as does Guardian no, Osiris. No, he deals a lot of damage. Umar is low. Down goes Um. Down goes two heroes, three heroes. Irock is backing up. Midget is just getting no. range. Meta screens him out. My goodness. At the same time, Centaur Roar Runner comes in, uses his ult to kill out Cone Wolf. That was a perfect pickup. That was yeah. excellent. He should not have approached the wave when Skyrath was up there. He only needed the one slow from Skyrath to kill him because he's got no boots. And his supports left him. I know they took a fight bottom, but oh, so close to the relic. Yeah. I, I, I personally think that, that Cone was seeing how the game was going so far and felt he could safely farm. Yeah. But Made a mistake. Dason really, really knew what was going on. He had great map awareness. He had you know great understanding of what he can do. He ulted so, so Sniper could back off. But at the right. same time, he came in, popped. Oh, Cone and Cone's in trouble again. Cone is back they, in. He needs his supports back in lane immediately. It was I Like agree. I was saying, it was functioning so well, and I don't know why they broke it up. Although, here comes Troll and Kazuku to potentially gank. I think they're going to try to go heroes. for the Centaur. Centaur's so close to because he has so much HP. Skyrath gets potted out. The axes get thrown. Oh, Kazuku did use Slow. The ult comes down. The ult comes down as well on the Radiant side. The axes spin. Shackles up. Down goes Metamorphosis. Dacen is still cupped up. In comes Senorus. He deals all that damage. Again. Boom goes the dynamite. Kong dies. No. Everybody dies. What a fantastic no. initiation. Look at that. Three kills out on Senorus. And there, that was such That's a counter initiation. Senorus, that was a fantastic TP in by Senorus. He comes in, deals damage, casts his ult. All sorts of fun happens. Let's see the fight. Recap, ladies and gentlemen. The Dora's game won't let me. Tower is under attack. <laughs> they attack the tower. In the meantime, in bottom Kazuku, lane, uh, rock farms. Oh, and the inspector is forced to go for urn and boot, and there's that fast relic right out the window. That was that that that, that, that is a game losing mistake potentially soon. for the for the dire. Their plan was going so perfectly, and they threw it away when they let the supports leave the specter alone. That was just needed to keep them up there. And specter, uh, and sorry, shadow shaman did not go for the. Um, Stun on the on Centaur War Runner even when he had the chance. In the meantime, blinking by Metamorphosis, he picks up Cone. Cone gets damaged. Quap deals right clicks. Flame is out by Gal, but it the right clicks are all there. Dason keeps on surviving. Centaurus almost escapes. He does escape the Tide Hunter ult. And they but steal Ravage. Dason does not. Meta is still there. Meta does steal Ravage, as you said. That's my best guess. I can't click him. Oh well, I believe you, sir. Meta has is there with no Bottom tower is under attack. I, th I think I think the dire may be out of this one. Oh uh, man! With thirteen and four, Dyer's uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. But the way things are going, I would say it's very hard for them to reinitiate and retake the game. They were uh, so close to it all going right, and then they then they broke up the trailing. Well, but they do have heroes that scale very, very well. Orchid picked up from the Queen, which Vengeance so earlier noted is uh, not an uncommon first item, but a risky one. So we'll see how well that works out in these upcoming ganks. Gimli's Troll far too close. He gets bracketed in. The ult from Troll gets in. He gets shackled out. Gal gets hit by the ult, but no damage. He gets turned into a pig or a chicken and dies. Meantime, Centaurus picks up the double... Picks up the bounty, has all that mana. He might come in and pick somebody off with that orchid. Double 30% extra damage. 
may turn out on a kill. Along with an ult, that might be worth it. Three heroes bottom lane, but Cenarus is spotted. That, that ward gives great line of sight. In the meantime, Cone is in the jungle farming. Umarg is farming top lane. Ult comes out on a giant midget to kill those ancient stacks. That's the only way he can deal with it. Janarius can see him from high ground, though. That's true. Hmm. Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? I don't think it? he can kill him solo. Um, Maybe, but unlikely. I, I, think, I think if you get plans, everything just right, yes. But there are two heroes. Meta and Dacen are there. Giant just comes in for no reason. In blinks Meta. He does the ravage. In comes Quap to deal the damage. Pick up Axe spin around for 50% of damage on the two supports. But it's not enough. And down goes our dear troll warlord for very little. Yeah, Dyer is... Uh... I feel the tilt is coming. Disintegrating. Yeah, the tilt is happening. Dyer's I rock right clicks the middle tower. Oh, in comes man, the two supports to zone him out. He may have a lot of range, but he does not have the HP to withstand an oopsie. And while we're watching here, Cenarus blinks in and kills Cone, mid lane. Top lane, I should say. And uh, Ping is called to take down that top tier one tower on the dire side. Dacen. Xenarus and Gimli are there to deal the damage. In the meantime, in comes Shadow Shaman by himself. I don't fortified. know what he's going to do. He doesn't. He's only level 5. He doesn't have his ult. Glyph is popped for Magic free because once a tier 1 goes down, you get a second one. I really don't know why Kaz is there. If Kaz gets spotted, pause is called. If Kaz gets called, uh, if he gets spotted, which I have a feeling he does. What? Why did they rotate the support to the top dust? Why did they do it? Because I think I might, I might cry. Well, uh, fog of war, Kaz is not seen. Kaz isn't seen. And Meta's back. So Kaz is there safely. I think they're desperately trying to slow things down, like. The ball is rolling down the hill, and they're trying to slow it down. And they yeah. really just can't figure out a way to do that. Cenarus yeah. picks up all the creep. And I mean, maybe Midget, really you're too close. Radiance. He gets stunned. There goes the centaur ult. He silenced the damage over time. Comes down. The nukes are real. And he goes pop. They might chase out and get Kaz. Blinks in. Cenarus, he gets silenced with the orchid. Another stun by Dacen. Dacen blinks in and stuns perfectly. Four heroes, almost five. It's going to become five for the Radiant side to come in and take care of that tier one tower. It's going to be nasty as all get out. 16 minutes in, 17 and five. Three tier ones knocked down on the dire side with heroes that really do need their Dyer's initial farm to do anything. Uh, the tilt is Dyer's real, guys. I re uh, it's very, very tough. I feel that... The dudes, middle tower, uh, this 6.80 draft oh, just isn't panning out. Uh, the rotating the supports out of top lane and letting Spectre die, that's not panning out. What is this Coldblick Doblick carrier? I mean, 15 damage is real, but like, She's not strong. that real. Cone might be spotted out. Blink on car Cenarus. He moves out of way. Dowson stuns him out. He has the, he Four has heroes the are there. He blades out, but he's silenced in three different ways. The ult comes out on Sniper and brings him down, but Giant Midget comes in. Gauss tries to block the stun. A smoke is popped. And they leave. I think this... Extra movement speed too strong. I, I, I really don't, I don't understand the smoke pickup uh, at all in my opinion. It's it's so interesting. The map control by the dire side. The wards are in the right position. Oh, but center splits out. The stun is covering three heroes. Meta gets stunned. Gimli gets stunned. Blade goes out. Giant Midget close in. The ult from Gimli is real. The fire is real. In blinks. The, the ravage is real. Dowson gets damaged. Everybody dies Call of tried on to the radiant in. side. In the dire, I'm sorry, the dire side. Cone oh, is die, by himself. He gets uh -oh. silenced by Cenarus. The right clicks. He's picked up, stunned out by Dacen. The damage from Meta is there, but everybody's backing out. The negative armor is present. The ultimate from Sniper comes in. Meta right clicks him out. There goes Cenarus to finish him off. They should All call five it. heroes dead, 23 and 6. They, they should call it. This is... I really think they would have won, except they tried to take that fight bottom and they let the Spectre die. I don't know what to say. Um... I think the very, very, very hard part about this 
is that the dire side do have comeback potential. They really do. Not they enough. Really, they really, no, they, they, they do. For this reason, imagine if Spectre ults and gets everybody all clumped together. At the same time, Troll Warlord comes in and ults, and, every, and all the illusions get bonus damage. Kazaku comes in and drops his wards and deals that area damage. Along with the Blink Ravage, they've got a lot of team fight lockdown. They just don't have the damage. And the Centaur ult has just made such a big difference on that's engaging true. and disengaging. But that shows, that statement shows why Centaur throughout how many patches now? Smoke has popped. All five heroes are in position, bottom lane on the Radiant side. They might move in and take Roshan, or they might move in and take a tier two tower, bot or mid lane. But three heroes on the dire side are up near the secret shop. There's no vision there. No one knows where each other is. Pings out for Roshan. Here it comes. Meta starts the right clicks. Everybody starts it. Bot breaks the, the Lincoln Sphere. Negative armor is brought down. Nobody on the dire sides know. There goes the Troll Warlord ult to farm those ancients. They're so close to each other, and they don't know what's going on. All they need is an accidental blink. In comes the blink on Meta. Everybody gets a little bit of damage from, from Roshan, but he's going down. Who do you think should pick up this Roshan? I think it'll be Iroh, but it might be Scenarius. Uh, oh, okay. It's the this Centaur. I think, I think Rock just didn't have a, a good inventory space, so he was happy to let Centaur take it. They should be quoting Iron Maiden and run for the hills and run far away. And as Finch points out, a quick uh, a quick Ags picked up on Queen of Pain. She is definitely scary at the stage of the game. A 10-1-10 and 10, uh, score. Attack. Look at this. Four of the Dire Heroes are here in the Ancients, sapping XP and guarding Midget because they know Midget really is their uh, take or break. Attack. Kazuko gets some negative damage, a negative magic, and some damage from Meta. Meta is getting close. He drops a ward so everybody can see it. He, Giant Midget gets picked up. Here comes Centaurus. The blade goes out. The damage from Meta is there. In blink, Centaurus. He picks off Shadow Shaman. He goes down from all that magic damage. The shrapnel gets dropped for no reason. And there goes some more push from Centaurus. In blinks. Uh, Dason, they're looking to put pressure on the mid lane tier 2 tower at the 20 minute mark. I just, I'm not sure out. what Dyer's plan here is. Dude, they're, 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 they can't stop go, these go. pushes. They don't have the no, kind of push to do it, even if they could. I don't know, maybe a great Ravage with the combo with the Jakira and the Shadow Shaman ults. Dyer's middle tower is under they went a fight. They uh, did almost win a fight earlier, but that was with the Spectre buyback, and it turned out to be a total team fight. Center's TP's away to go bot lane to farm and push the lane. Dyer's Meanwhile, three of the Radiant attack. Heroes get ready to set up the knockout, the two tower in the bottom lane. Meta puts up a ward. Uh, to go along with the sentry, I mean, uh, an observer, to go along with the sentry. The combination is there. Negative armor is dropped out by Rock. Rock is there, TP out by Umark, but it's not soon enough. The alt brings him down. And Onage is real, as Pyrian Flax would say. He's on a mega kill streak, I Rock. Meanwhile, four of his compatriots are pushing the dire tier two tower. Dason is uh, about, what? Two thirds health doesn't bother using that double edge to clear the creep wave. I don't think they can defend this tower. I mean, their best chance is hold up for high ground and hope they can hold something off. I agree. I, I don't feel like there's any reason to defend this tier two at this point. The real question is do they just keep pushing bottom now with the sniper still pushing top or. So they back off and try to group it together. I think they can keep pushing because really, there's a lot of heroes on the sniper. The really hard part is that they've got heroes that need farm, don't have farm. Oh, Shadow Shaman curls around. Irock goes in Viz for a saving grace. No vision, no smoke. Midget TP's out to go. Bottom. They push the tier two out. Dason and Gimli are there to clear the creeps and deal some right clicks on the tier three bottom lane tower. Centaurus joins in on them. The right clicks are real. Metamorphosis comes in after pulling the attack. enemy creep. Uh, push full side. Three heroes on the dire side. Counter out. In blinks Umar. Catches all three heroes. The ult comes down. Centaurus blinks away. In spins. The, uh, the snakes are here. Dazen du double edges. But he TPs away. The urn is there. The right clicks are real. The bashes are real. Guys, guys, he guys. respawns. Will they here. bother locking him down? Kazuko is dangerously close. Here he comes in. The ulti comes down. Centers on the high ground. Kills Kaz. Dowson is there. Cone gets stunned. Damage is there. Dason brings him down. He's almost dead. The pickup on Umar. Meta brings him down. Umar sprays and prays and kills him. 
Everybody's dying! Jason is all by himself. The axe is spin. Jason stains giant midget. The double edge! The right clicks! What a fight! What a fight! In the meantime, top lane, Irock takes care of the mid two towers. So there are no more two tier two towers on the dire side. Four of the heroes died. That was a perfect initiation on the dire side. That was like textbook. If you wanted to write a chapter on perfect initiation, that would be it. But then you would write a footnote saying, initiation doesn't matter if they don't have farm, which is what you've been saying the whole game, David. Yeah. yeah. Irock is hunting Umark. Irock is getting the right clicks. The shrapnel gives true sight. There's this. There's a double oh, ult. The ult gets canceled on Rock. Rock still has it, but Centers gets that kill. 14 and 13, 14, 1 and 13 is 2. Centaurus is named. He is like the MVP of the group. The damage is real. 31 8, and 8 at 24 minutes. This would be the give up point if you if you wanted to call the GG before uh, Rax I mean, gets picked. I think they're going to take Rax now, so it won't matter, but this game has been over, unfortunately, for a long time. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but here comes the contest. Troll Warlord ult is up. My dude's up. Tower. Oh, I'm not sure why. Locked down on IROC. He backs off. The right clicks are real. This is when you see Sniper's big advantage during sieges. He yep. can if he has vision, he can just destroy a tower. The misses mean nothing. Blink in by Dallison. Pop goes the weasel. Gal gets stunned, silenced. Down gets dropped. The wards. Kazuko tries to lock down Dallison, but the ult from Meta, not Meta, I'm sorry, from Skyrath Mage. Conwolf tries to deal damage, but it's not enough. Kaz gets dropped by Centaurus, as does the Spectre. Everybody backs out on the Radiant side. In blinks in Umar with the Ravage, kills off the Skyrath Mage. Centaurus blinks away. Irak invises out, but it oh, might be the damage so over time. Dalson tries to save, but he gets bashed by a giant midget just by luck. Almost killed the, the sniper through the invis with all the AoE from the Troll Warlord. It took all the ults to save that uh, Radiant yeah. Tier 3 mid lane tower. Well, they did hold. Something back That's something good. In your bottom. Held for a minute. Right now, the net worth is like 15,000 on Quippity Quop. Three of the Radiant Heroes are top. Next are Umarg and Giant Midget. Giant Midget at the top at 8,000. Spectre has 4.5 net worth. Is. He is so happening. paper thin. He is so, so, so under farm. And remember how close he was to that relic before the supports left him yep. in lane. Yep. So possibly it was the rotation, but think about it this way. If you were the Dire and you were seeing out top lane... Spectre was just farming freely, she wasn't dying, everything's safe. Why not rotate bottom and contest three incredibly thin? Because heroes? Spectre yeah. can't solo Centaur and support your missing bottom. That's true. But think about it from the dire side, they were seeing how things were going so well. Yeah, nah, it's tempting. It's always so tempting to go for that rotation Cone, when everything's good. Cone daggers in and then turns around and decides, I'm just gonna go home. Meantime, Meta comes in, is gonna pop some wards. Umarg. Sprays him. He gets picked up by Meta. Drops him down straight. No fancy stuff into high ground. Centaurus guards Meta. Screens him out. Midget uses his ult to farm camps within breathing space of the most dangerous hero on the Radiant side. Meta comes in and does his own special screening of Centaurus. Things might happen. Four of the five dire heroes are near their tier three top. In comes their fifth on Umarg. They're anticipating a push, but I don't think it's happening because Dacen is bottom, doing the classic Tranquil Boots drop to farm up, and the remaining four are going mid, which is the which is the smart pickup because the mid lane tier three tower is just so so low. I mean, it's what I can't even click on it for for some reason. The mid, but it's, it's it's low. One hundred sixty-five. It's just about deniable. Roshan respawns in a minute and 15 seconds, which would be perfect to pick up on the rating, because if they pick it up, they can just casually walk in and take everything. And, you know, I definitely think it's too late, but Dyer have kind of stopped the bleeding a little bit over the last couple of minutes. That's good for them. That's true. They're not feeding. They're not really farming, but they've held high ground when they've had to. You know, they, they, they're, they're still doing what they need to do. I, just, I, don't, I still think they're just... That Spectre... This game is depressing. I'm gonna cry, Nest. I'm gonna cry so hard. You were far too invested. Blink comes out on Deus and he stuns nothing that 
animation just doesn't pan out. I think he he was a little too ambitious, but four of the five are in lane. A shrapnel's dropped out for something. The creeps move in. The radiant move in. Oh, right God. clicks. <laughs> Kazuko just goes down from double damage on IROC. Oh my goodness. The damage is real. So right Vincent's now, that queen might go for the scythe of ice with that ultimate orb, giving her uh, a lot of good lockdown, especially um, against some slippery heroes. I'm gonna be honest, she's sitting with 3.5 gold in her pocket. I think she's building the skadoo. You think uh, so? Scotty, eh, that HP gain. She just becomes unkillable. Spectre all comes Scotty. down. Down comes the ravage. Everybody gets damaged. Eh, all the ults are real. Two heroes down on the dire side. Three heroes yeah, down on the dire side. Centaurus finally goes down. Midget's trying to get a kill. Meta picks up Giant Midget, brings him down. Damage is real. Midget goes down. Kazuko gets rocked off on a rock. The snakes get dropped, for, but for what reason? Yep, that's And Irock is just going to farm them. That, once again, like, it shows how there's a great initiation on the dire side. But they're just so soft at this point. Giant mission call, giant midget calls raid boss down with Sanders being dead for forty something seconds at this point, but his buyback is up. Will he do it? Not so sure. They're gonna take care of the rest of these racks on the mid lane. Radiant. Gal drops out the ice pack. here. Got the racks are down. Yeah. Um. I mean, they might feel like they have an ace in a hole. But this is the second time that they've initiated pretty solidly on the high ground. Yep. For naught. Yep. Uh, Skyrim Mage calls out a fish hook style pattern, Gettysburg <laughs> style, into the Roshan pit. <laughs> the Union troops would be proud of that maneuver. And it is side of the spice, right. The inverted little round top is uh, planned up. Invis, Iroc, they're just setting up. Look at all the HP on Dason. David, how much HP does he have? The Sentai War Runner? Currently yep. has 2,977 HP, and he runs into Kazuko, oh, and Kaz. Kazuko's Poor like, oh, Kaz. Fuck. He smoked up for some reason. Shackle just to escape. Dason chases him out. I was wrong. The side does get picked up on Quippity Quap, as you said, David. And the damage gets dropped down on Roshan. Uh, I think Gimli should not be there at all, because look at that. He gets right click. He's now 50 HP. Orchid comes down. Slow comes down from Senoris. And they're just going to get rid of Roshan. In the meantime, Commonwealth is farming. Umarg is attempting to push the lane out. And Gal and Midget are trying to just deal with the bottom lane. Roshan is gone. Irock picks it up, and they spread out. Probably push bottom here after picking up that Aegis. Clear the waves real quick. Yep, I agree. Yep, Umar gets spotted out. He gets pinged. He TPs after his blink and goes home. Uh, Cone is all by himself. It is so, so dangerous to be there. And he, he TPs. He realizes that he's far, far too far away. Vanguard. Come in handy. That's it. That's the biggest item that he has. Mm, two TPs top. They do not want to lose the tower. <laughs> Oh, like, goes nope. down on centers, but remember, with that Agonim Scepter, the damage, damage is the same, but the cooldown is fantastic. It actually increases the damage, by the way. Oh, it does? Mm-hmm. Huh. I didn't know that. But what I do know is that the cooldown is dropped Yeah, the cool, it's really the cooldown that makes it important. It becomes, what is it? It's a 40-second cooldown on something that deals yep. 575 pure damage in a cone. And it's not a small cone. It's huge. Centaur ult goes down. Bottom lane, giant midget gets parked out. He gets he chain stuns Dalson. Kazuko drops the snakes. Dalson's gonna go down. Holy cow! That was aggressive. It takes. I think he saw the two ults? the shaman and thought he was alone, and so he just kind of went for it. Dyer's yep. Top but hey, they don't have snakes one for this fight. spell on Dalson. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven spells and items casted by the dire side. But it's relatively Dyer's low. Meanwhile, top lane, Ravage goes up. They take care of the tier three. Aegis gets popped. Gimli is low. Guardian of Centers gets just stun locked by Whoa. Giant Midget with an 
with a Black King bar. Meta and Irock are just dealing damage over time. Cone is just trying to escape, but Irock gets him with the ulti, possibly. Yes, he goes down. In the meantime, Midget just gets popped. He goes far too ambitious. Centaurus comes in, helps out Skywrath Mage. There's a tier three tower get dropped, and they're going to take that tier three Rax as well. Vivax on the Radiance, wow. I'm sorry, the Dire side. Everybody but Kaz gets popped. In comes Giant Midget, he gets stun locked. Dieback is real. Gal stuns people out. Irock pops his Manta and just goes kaboom and takes care of Gal. Umar blinks in to deal to decrease the damage. Umar TPs out. Centaurus uses his ult to polish things off. Buyback on Umar. He's all by himself. They're like this. They're just, just death, trying man. desperately to keep the game alive. They do not want to give up. They're like, today. you're going to have to kill our ancients the old-fashioned way, guys. Blinks in. Gushes. Stunlock. Sheepstick. Brought down. Two racks. Taken care of. And there's the GG by Cone Wolf. Everybody says, that was fun. 48-13 at the 34-minute mark. Poor Irock not getting his rape here. Angel here. goes hot. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today is the second game of the Kingdom Hill match for February. What is it? The 21st of February in 2015. I, myself, am dust. Along with us is Vengeance, our stats man, and David, my fantastic analyst. Dave, how do you think, think this game went? Should not have rotated those supports out. Would have won the game. Look at Quap's GPM. She really does need those horns. Six, mm. six, six. Good game, though. Good game. It was a fantastic game. All right. Well, thanks so much for casting for us, Josh. It's my pleasure, sir.